<clears throat> I write something. Wait, how late is it? Uh, we still have seven minutes. Okay. I write the title. Faking. So you see, this is our light board, which is our, all of our pride. Okay. Andre? Yes, it's, it's lo it looks amazing. It looks amazing. Okay. Faking Brownian. Motion. Okay, with continuous Markov martingales. Okay, yeah, one can read it, Andre. Yes, I can read it. Yeah, you can read it. I took some dark clothing, so because with this it's not so good with a light one, but with the dark jacket, it in should way, work. In, in way, it looks like our best uh, Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Jordan, can you turn on your camera? I yeah, I and Yuri, now. please. Yeah, now I, I got you. So hello, hello, hello. Ah, you just I just saw you to, you sent an email to Karatsas. Yeah. Can can you send him an email with the link? Maybe he has time to 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 join in. And thank you for for spotting our very new paper. It was just yesterday yeah. that we put uh, it on I, archive. Uh, Walter, I can tell you uh, uh, I cannot miss such a paper. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Uh, but do, you see, uh, do you think that uh, uh, Yanis will be interested in your talk now? Uh, you can send him an. I mean, it's on a different topic. I have not worked with Yanis on this. This is. Uh, but still, if you are kind enough to send him the link, uh, then he can choose. Uh, if, if I can, can do this, but I'm not sure that I can do this because I'm ah. already uh, on here. Ah. Okay, okay, I can always do it here from my, I still have five minutes. So I send this to Yanis, just a moment. Okay. Uh-huh, okay. Here I have, up, up, up. here I, where do I find it? I, I see Yuri Hintz is uh, online. Yeah, Yuri? Yuri, please switch on your camera and turn on. Or maybe, maybe the sound. Then. Yeah, the sound and everything. Vega. Okay. Well, I. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, hello, hello. Oh, uh, this is my picture. Yeah, Sorry. but we want to see you. <laughs> Okay. okay, I cannot do this now. Okay, now let's do this thing here. Uh, uh, Walter, don't worry. If we don't manage now to yeah. send the link to Yanis, yeah, yeah. then uh, uh, we can recommend him uh, to see or to watch the record. Ah, so the will be recorded ah excellent. To anybody at any time. Ah. This is very nice. So please send it to me to okay, the. I, don't, I can do this after. This will be very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where is Yuri Kavanov? I hope he will join us soon. Yeah, but please, everybody who is now here, I would very much appreciate if everybody can uh, open the camera. Yes, thank you, Andre. Yeah, and please, all the others. Uh, Yuri hints. Uh, I'm just working, you know. Ah, I okay. Like if, if something, something wrong here, I, I, I will. Okay, okay. But it's so, I mean, I hate to talk to a wall, and it's so nice to see the faces. And Yeah. 
it will yeah, it will all work. But I'm missing Yuri Kabanov. Where is he? Yes. Yeah, we have two more minutes. Okay. Ah, here is Yuri. Hi, Yuri. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, so all this works out. So Yuri, what do you say? I have here. You are a co-host, so you don't need to share the script, by the way, right? Me? No, 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 no. I do it all, all in one. This is this is the nice thing. It's like in the good old days, almost, mm -hmm. which I hope will come back soon again. So, Jordan, thank you very much for your emails. Okay, okay, this looks very interesting, and I hope I can contribute today something for your for the next edition of your book on the counter examples. Okay, thank you. Okay. My only comment is that uh, the information is uh, sent at a too late, usually late. I thought that this is solvable and this is purely technical problem. And now I can see uh, 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 Ale Alexander Sasha Gushin. Okay. Uh, uh, hello, Sasha. Hello, hello. Uh, I, uh, With a beautiful carpet behind you. Okay, so thank you for all of all of you who have switched on the camera. Don't turn it off. I will be very angry. And and the others, please turn it on. Recording in progress. Okay. So it's one past the full hour. Should I start or how do we? Be better, it would be better to wait uh, several minutes because you know that students are waiting. Okay, okay, no, that's not true. They are very brave. But Yuri, Yuri Kabanov, please switch on your camera. I want to see you. On, of I, I, I don't see you. Ah, now, now I see you. Ah. Invited him, but it seems that uh, he will sleep. Okay, okay. So, Ochin Karasho. Ochin Karasho. Okay. Yeah, well, we ha have to reshape the, the surface of the earth and somehow make it flatten the curve. Yeah, that's, that's what would be very nice, yeah. Uh, uh, you see that Bill Keith, uh, he's uh, now, I believe, in Queensland. Where? In? Queensland. Ah, Australia. okay, okay. In but Yuri, you are in Besançon presently, yeah. yeah. Besançon. At home. Physically in Besançon, but mentally more so. Okay, okay. 
Good. So Yuri, you tell me when I should start. Ah, ah, I'm very happy. Ah, Klebana, so can you turn on your camera, please? Uh -huh. yeah. Hello, yeah. Hi, hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Yuri. Hello. Hi. So, there are a lot of people from Australia today. <laughs> Except uh, Kostya Barakov. Ah, very good, very good. The only problem is that there are uh, uh, spiders uh, in uh, and also uh, venomous, uh, venomous uh, snakes. <laughs> Yes, it, it appears all, all the time. Sometimes I see the skin, sometimes I see the snake, but this is a brown sea snake. It's, it's very aggressive, but it is very mild, mildly venomous. It's, it's, it's not, a, not a bad snake. But, but there are others. Um, um, neighbors too have some uh, eastern browns and uh, taipans, so they are the most deadly. Second, and the third deadliest snake in the world here. So, <laughs> you uh, can add. You are welcome. <laughs> okay, good. Good, so let's start. Uh, okay. Please. Should I start? Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to present this work, in particular as uh, Hamza and Klebana, who are somehow at the root of these uh, things with the faking brown emotion are in the audience. I'm very happy that they are present. Yeah, and this is the title of a paper which we have put on archive uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, the authors, you have it all in the abstract, so I just make the ab abbreviations. It's Matthias Bagelberg, who is here in Vienna, where I'm presently standing in the basement of our uh, faculty. So Matthias Bagelberg, then there is George Lauther. I will mention him during the talk. He is in London working in industry. And then there is Gudmund Pama, uh, who uh, did his PhD with Matthias Bagelberg here, uh, defended it uh, about a year ago, and now is in Zurich with Beatrice Acciaio and myself. And the thing emerged from a paper which we called from Bachelier, I mean our Saint Bachelier, to Dupier via optimal transport. 
transport. And this is a paper we wrote for finance and stochastics because Yuri, as you will certainly remember, this was founded 25 years ago, mathematical finance, and they not somehow celebrate. And we did this kind of, it's a survey article uh, from Bachelier to uh, Dupier. And these are the three of us, Baggy, Burke, Pama, and myself. And this should soon appear in uh, Finance and Stochastics, while this is only available on Archive. So what, what was the motivation? The motivation was uh, here this to peer. So let me introduce some notation. This is a call option maturing at time t and with a strike price x. And everybody in this audience knows how this is defined, expectation of st minus x plus Okay, expectation under the risk neutral measure, etc., etc. Okay, now knowing all the option prices, say the call options, this is equivalent to knowing all the uh, one dimensional distributions. So we have the formula that uh, the probability density at time t and at x is just c uh, twice uh, second derivative with respect to x. So everybody here knows this formula uh, that uh, you can recover uh, from the option prices. You can uh, recover the uh, probability distributions for the one-dimensional uh, marginals. And the question is, the big question is, does this determine the law of st? Say t bigger than zero, but you can make a finite horizon little matters. Okay, so this was of course, in mathematical finance, uh, 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 an issue of major uh, practical relevance. If you know the option prices, do you know the uh, law of ST, which would allow you uh, to also to price all exotic options, which I mean path dependent options. All this refers to the risk neutral measure, but I only write P in our context. Okay, now here comes Dupier. So Dupier, what does he do? He makes an ansatz. How should the st look like? The dst is equal to sigma of t and of st times dbt. bt is a Brownian motion. Sigma of two variables is assumed to be a deterministic function, and this is st. Well, I have to say uh, uh, the, the usual thing in uh, uh, mathematical finance is not to write it this way, but rather to divide by st for later use, because we will soon be with Brownian motions. We do it in the good old Bachelier style. We do the additive version. Okay, yeah, and how do you determine the st, uh, the, this function s of t and of x? So there is the formula, which is s squared tx over 2 is equal to c when you derive it with respect to t and to x divided by c 2 times, which is just the probability density. And everybody in this audience, I think, knows how to derive this. So formally, it is just plugging in Ito's formula, absolutely straightforward. And this was still, this was a great insight by Bruno Dupier in the early 90s, I believe. And 
Then he has this nice quote. He says, up to technical regularity assumptions, there is a unique diffusion process which gives you the given one-dimensional marginals. Now this is, of course, very nice, up to technical regularity assumptions. And I think he's perfectly right. It is really up to technical regularity assumptions. But what are these regularity assumptions? There are the mathematicians who really want to know it very precisely. So first of all, of course, all these things here have to be have to make sense that you can form these derivatives because the derivation is uh, uh, somewhat formal. But this is not what I want to do. I want to do, is this unique? Uniqueness, in which sense? Uniqueness for the most regular P, T, X. So I'm not elaborating on how regular this P, T, X has to be, but I want to take the P, T, X, so that S, T, the law of S, T is simply Gaussian. And for technical reasons, we don't take T, we take T plus one. So in other words, S0 is already normally distributed so that we don't have difficulties when it starts from a point. Okay, so in other words, and this brings me to faking Brownian motions. So faking Brownian motion, yeah, one can read this. Uh, so this is, uh, and uh, if I remember correctly, the word fake Brownian motion was introduced by Hamza and Klebana. Is this correct? Did you introduce the wording? Uh, Excuse me? Say it again, please. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Anyhow, this is, okay, what is a fake Brownian motion? It is a process ST which has the Gaussian uh, one-dimensional uh, one uh, distributions, marginal distributions. And of course, it's very easy to see that this does not de determine a stochastic process in general. But the question is, when you uh, restrict things, so you can have here martingales, okay? And you should put Markov, you should put continuous. What of these properties can you, can you impose on the process? Of course, there is always Brownian motion. This is trivial, but you want a fake Brownian motion, a different process, which has at, as many uh, nice properties which you can imagine. And this paper by Hamza and uh, Klebana from 2007, if I remember correctly, they posed this problem. They uh, gave the first uh, solution and since then, many solutions have been given. Uh, some of them uh, continuous and not Markov. Uh, uh, some of them Markov but not continuous. Yeah, all of them should be Martingales. I don't go through uh, the literature I gave in my abstract uh, and in, in our paper. Uh, you can find a thorough account on this problem, which after the Hamza Klebana paper uh, became a very popular topic. Okay, so let me first go in the positive direction. And for this, I have to erase. 
So you see we do it here in Vienna almost the good old way. So what is a theorem in the positive direction? Okay, so here is a, an important theorem by George Lauther, who is our co-author on this. Lauther, if I remember correctly, this was in 09. And what did Lauther, yeah, and this builds on previous work by Jönji. This was in 86 already. Okay, then there is something by a French guy called Pierre, and he did not publish it, but it is referred to something uh, by Pierre in a paper by Hirsch, Roynet, and the late Marc Yor. Uh, okay, so this was different degrees of generality. So, first of all, uh, okay, given a peacock, you know, Mark Yor really loved this word peacock, and call it mu t. So, mu t, a one dimensional distribution, and the peacock, uh, it's not a turkey, uh, which was very popular in the last days in the US. A peacock is a processus croissant pour l'ordre uh, convex, so which means that mu t1 is less than or equal mu t2 in convex order if t1 is, comes before t2. So these are candidates for the marginal distributions of a martingale. And now in Lauther's theorem, it is supposed that mu t, the peacock, is weakly continuous and support of mu t is convex. Okay, for every t. Then it follows there exists a unique, this is uniqueness, a unique, I switch now from S to X, X T, T greater zero, with these given marginals, I don't write it, which is such that we have continuous martingale, so this property, continuous and martingale, and strong Markov. Okay, so let me discuss a little bit. So weakly continuous is very natural because of course when, when it makes a jump in this convex order, so uh, then you have no chance to make this by a continuous uh, uh, process. Support of mu t convex is also very natural. If you think of the Poisson process, who is uh, uh, supported by the natural numbers, of course there is no way uh, to uh, find such a process xt which is continuous. So both are very natural and there is uniqueness. Well, this is almost the same here. The only difference is this little word strong here. So if you add a strong mod, uh, continuous <coughs> a strong Markovian continuous martingale, then there is uniqueness. So in particular, if you impose on the marginals of a Brownian motion, which uh, of course satisfies these things here, uh, then this holds true. But what I'm going to show you, if you drop the word strong here, then we can construct a counterexample. Uh, so this was the challenge arising from our survey paper 
that we saw this and figured out a way to construct such a, uh, uh, such a process here. Okay, so what's the difference between a Markov process and a strong Markov process? Uh, I think everybody knows the definition. One pertains to deterministic times and the other to stopping times. But where, where are good counterexamples? And there is a very a beautiful counterexample, which is very easy once you have seen it, but you first have to see it. And this is particularly nice for me to give this, to mention this in a talk which is somehow spiritually happening in Moscow. So, uh, there is a paper by Eugene Dinkin and Yushkevich. in, believe it, in 56, 1956, okay, where they construct an enlightening example of a strong Markov process, strong Markov is not equivalent to Markov. And even for continuous martingales, okay? So what's the example that they have constructed? Uh, okay, so I do it this way. The x naught is distributed like n01 or uh, delta x naught with probability one half. Okay, so here is the picture. You have some x naught, and the process ether starts at uh, at some point different, which is originally uh, normally distributed. Okay, and if it starts here at an x which is different from x naught, then it is simply Brownian motion. Okay. If it starts at x0, then it simply sits on x0 forever. So these are the paths of uh, this process. You flip a coin at the beginning that you are either at x0 or somewhere else. If you are somewhere else, you run a Brownian motion, or if you are at x0, you just maintain there. Okay, so this process is Markov. Why is it Markov? Because if you have a fixed time t, then either it is here, then you know how it continues, or with probability 1, it is on somewhere on the real line, say here, then again you know how it continues. Well, you will say there are trajectories which at time t are exactly at this point x0. But for every fixed t, this is only a null set, and this doesn't matter in the definition of a Markov process. So this process is Markov, but it is not strong Markov, because if you take t, tau is infimum of t such that xt is equal to x0. So for this process, this would be t, or for this process, it would be this, or for this process, it would be this. Then when you are at this stopping time, this is, defines the stopping time tau. I don't write it up formally, but I count on your intuition. When you look at time tau, then you just see that the process is at the point x0, but you don't know from which regime it is coming. Maybe it came from these lazy particles, which always remain constant, or it came from some others, okay? And this is now something which happens with positive probability. 
And so therefore with positive probability at time tau, you don't know how it will continue. Okay, so I hope I gave you the intuition of this beautiful example, which again I, I repeat, once you have seen it, it is obvious, but uh, before you have seen it, it's hard to figure out the, the difference. Okay, so this was our point of inspiration and what we do here is some variant of this idea of uh, Dinkin and Yushkevich, which is now how many? Uh, 65 years ago, if I'm calculating correctly. Uh, yeah, 65. And Dinkin was 32 years old. I do not know Yushkevich. Somebody knows Yushkevich in the audience? Yuri, you should know. No, Yuri, switch on your switch on your micro. Uh, yeah, can I move on after your talk? I think uh, uh, there is a certain comment on this uh, example. Ah, okay, okay. Somebody else wanted to say something? Uh, maybe, maybe what Yuri is going to tell is almost the same uh, that I have in mind. In fact. Yushkevich uh, uh, was the person who created this example and he gave the uh, talk at the very famous seminar of Marco Corsi, the seminar uh, led by Dinkin. And I know that, that a few people, I talked to them, and they strongly believe that, that uh, in fact, Yushkevich is the author of this example. It does matter. Yuri, you want to tell later? Switch on your... Okay, looking forward to your comment after the talk. So, after all this introduction, I should say, what is our theorem? Okay, there exists a continuous... Yes, yes, please. Yeah? Uh, somebody wanted to say something? No? Okay, I thought somebody wanted to say something. There exists a continuous uh, Markov martingale. I abbreviate it because I have it here. Uh, such that uh, xt is distributed like n not t plus 1. Okay, and of course it is not Brownian motion. Uh, okay, so this is the theorem. And, uh, well, it's a theorem, uh, but it's really an example because uh, whatever starts with an existence quantor is an example. Okay, and what I shall show you, I will make an example A and an example B. The A will be a preparatory example, and the B then will give the final answer. Okay, okay, so let us start with the first the preparatory example. Okay, now here I have the picture. Zero, one. I take finitely many intervals. A1, B1, AN, BN, and here AN. Bn. Okay, now, yeah, some notation, the, the set Gn is the union of these closed intervals. And Cn 
is its complement on R. So Cn also contains the remaining stuff. Okay, now what do I do? Now I start the Brownian motion, okay, and say it starts in this set Gn. Okay, so we will have a look. Maybe it's like this, and then it's like this, and then it goes like this. Okay, then we define A N T is collecting the time which uh, integral from 0 to t, indicator function when bs is in gn, uh, here I have the n, and the gn, uh, okay, ds. So a and t looks like this, it's a function which increases, <coughs> so here, here runs t, uh, which increases uh, linearly in time as long as we are in uh, here in say this interval a and b n. Once we are out uh, it does not increase, then it increases again, then it's out again something like this. So this is a typical path of a and t and the a and t gives rise to a time change. So tau t, well I write it something informally, this is a n uh, dot minus one. So you just flip this uh, process like this. Okay. And I define the process x n t as the original Brownian motion. This is a path of the original Brownian motion b t. Okay, <clears throat> the bt, but time changed with respect to this tau t, and I put an n up here. Okay, so where's the picture? The picture is this process here, uh, the process x and t, if the Brownian path is like this, first it follows this. Now, when the path is outside of my interval here, then the time jumps si simply. Then the next thing it does, it spares this time out and it does exactly what this thing did here. Okay, now when it is here between these two, no time passes, so therefore it jumps over here and then it continues like this. So this is a process which is moving only in the set Gn and sometimes it, uh, yeah, once it is in the interior of such, a, uh, such an interval, it behaves like a Brownian motion. Well, and when it hits, let's think right away, let's, when it uh, is here, then with high probability it is reflected because this excursion with high probability will come back here, but there is some intensity that it will jump to the, uh, to the neighbor here. Okay, so this is our process. Okay, conditionally on x not equal in g n. So what we do when x0 is outside, I will discuss in a moment. So the idea is, well, in the interior it looks like a Brownian motion, but it's not exactly reflected Brownian motion because you have on the one hand side, you have a flow which goes out here, which jumps, and on the other hand, there will particles come in. Okay. All these things are, well, as long as you know the, the distribution here, you can, you have formulas, you can, uh, you can uh, calculate this. So 
Now let's have a look what the process does when x0 is not in GM. So if this is something, well I change the color. Well here we borrow the idea of Dinkin and Yushkevich. So these are the so-called lazy particles. Uh, can you distinguish the color? A little bit, yeah. Maybe I have another color. Uh, here I have blue. Okay, so this is what we call a lazy particle, which simply sits there. Okay, now what do we have? We have on all these things, on each of these intervals, we have an influx from these jumping things, an outflux. Okay, now this does not cancel exactly, because after all, at the beginning, we have here, we have the Gaussian distribution. This is the law of x0. We start here. Okay, so at the beginning of this, when this thing is out of Cn, we have something like this. But as this is in 0, 1, when the law of x say, call it here delta t, a little time after, this will go down here. Okay, we did it on zero, 0,1 because contrary to this picture, the inflection point is then here. So this goes down. So, but we want the law to evolve like the, uh, uh, like the law of, uh, like the, the normal law. Okay, so what do we do? If this lazy particle is sitting here, then with some intensity it jumps either here or here with probabilities to make this jump a, a martingale. Okay, so there's an obvious formula how you have to divide the probabilities of these jumps in such a way that these lazy particles go to the boundaries of the neighboring intervals uh, and once they are there, then they continue to, to move, like uh, the, the, what we call the busy particles, which have these moves of a, of a brown emotion, plus possibly these jumps. Okay, now you have three things here at the boundary. You have an influx, you have an outflux, and possibly you get some influx from uh, these jumps from, or the change from the lazy particles to the busy particles. Okay, this you can all calculate and surprise, surprise, it does exactly the right thing. It just makes sure that here the density of the distribution, well maybe I write it here, that all these influxes and outfluxes make precisely that here this boundary point and this boundary point, they move in the right way. And in the interior, then that's a solution of the heat equation. It behaves in the right way. So summing up, summing up, what have I constructed? Or oh, I didn't construct, I, I gave you some hints on the construction, but you can all look it up in our paper. Uh, okay, so I erase this here. Okay, so summing up. Excuse, excuse me, Walter. Yes. Um, so once you start outside of Gn, yes, leave, then you never come back, do you? Exactly, exactly. Once you start in this Gn, you remain in the Gn, and then you jump either here or here, and from that on, that time on, you are busy. You are in this regime which I have described in the first part. Does this answer the question? Yes. Okay. Uh, good. So, summing up, this is a little bit uh, not completely dry. Summing up, okay, this x and t
Okay, has the good marginals. Here you have to take my word. You have to be, well, quite brave in these, uh, in these calculations. What's the intensity of all these, uh, these moves? But uh, this is uh, nothing deep. I mean, it's just calculations. Okay, has the good mar marginals. And what does it have of these uh, 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 properties? Well, it's Markov. It's a martingale. I think it's clear that it's a martingale because, yeah, then you make, you make the jumps at the boundary, you make them exactly to offset the reflecting behavior. And as I told you, this one jump, which the lazy particles do when they change their behavior, this is also done in a martingale way. So that's okay. It's Markov. Well, at every time, you know what to do. You know, if you are if you are a, a, a lazy particle, you stay there until the clock, clock rings. For this, you need a Poisson process, which tells you when the clock, clock rings. Or when you are here, you also know what to do. And in fact, it's even strongly Markov. Why is this the case? Well, if you, if you are at, uh, at any point ether in the, in, in, in the GN or in the, in the interior of these intervals, it's clear how, the, how it goes on. But also at the boundary of each of these intervals here, uh, there is little room because from here, whenever you are here with probability one, you start an excursion into this process. So it's a strong Markov martingale with the good marginals, but of course it's not continuous. Yeah, has a lot of jumps here. Okay, so the next task is how do we do it to make it uh, continuous? Okay, and for this I erase here everything. Uh, here is our theorem. Okay, so what's the time? Yeah, I still have some five minutes. Uh, so, well, the point is, of course, what you do now here is that you go here to infinity. You take many intervals here. Okay, such that you have that the Lebesgue measure of the, yeah, now this is G infinity, call this G infinity when you have uh, countably many intervals, such that the Lebesgue measure of this is less than one, and such that G infinity is dense. Of course, this is not the problem to do. Everybody in, well, in Moscow, they do it in kindergarten, don't they? Uh, but maybe in other, uh, countries, they do it in first year of uh, calculus. Well, you know how to, how to do such a thing. And then the C infinity is the <coughs> this thing here. Now you have, again, we have this A infinity T is now just the time <coughs> where you are in uh, where the BS is in G infinity, DS zero to T. This is the same formula which we had before, but now with an infinity here. With, uh, and the point is when you have this, it is, uh, it is strictly, well, I cannot draw it because uh, it is strictly increasing and therefore the tau T Tau t, the inverse, the time change is continuous. So this is, well, I have a hard time to draw it, but I think everybody 
everybody knows when this is dense, then a Brownian motion in each interval of time will visit one of the intervals here. Okay, and the tau t is continuous and of course increasing. Let's put here an infinity again. So we do exactly the same thing. We do the process, call it x infinity t. Does the same thing as when uh, the uh, when uh, it is in an interval, it behaves like a Brownian motion, as we have done. And at the boundary, well, uh, there are many intervals here. So intuitively speaking, it jumps to the next interval. But of course, there is no next interval. The nice thing is, this is a continuous process. All this is, of course, very well known, these constructions, that when you time change a Brownian motion with a uh, <coughs> family of stopping times or with a time change, which is continuous, then you get a continuous process. Okay, now it is a continuous process. It, it is still a Martingale. Yeah, maybe, maybe I say something. Well, you do exactly the same. It's just you have to prove, of course, that everything works. Uh, when you are in C infinity, you are a lazy particle and uh, at when the bell rings, okay, when the bell rings, then you start and uh, uh, you start to become a busy particle. Well, this is not, not so clear. Intuitively, you jump to the two neighbors, but of course there are no two neighbors, but you enter into this regime of the of the busy particles. So all this makes good mathematical sense, what I have just uh, described here with waving hands. And this continuous process, it is still a, Marco, uh, a martingale. That's not hard. Okay. And it is clearly Markov. Okay. Because again, when you have at time t, and you know at time t by definition, it is normally distributed according to some uh, Gaussian law, then you are either in G infinity or in C infinity. And in the first case, uh, uh, here you behave like a busy particle, here you behave like a lazy particle, you know exactly what to do. But it is not strong Markov. Well, first of all, we know it by Lauter's theorem. It cannot be. This is a theorem. Uh, this would be a contradiction. So there is a stopping time such that conditioning on the stopping time, you don't know how, it, uh, how the process uh, or, or a conditioning on the value of the process at the stopping time, you, don't, you cannot decide how the process goes on. And but I'm afraid I am out of time. We have, well, we don't have to prove it. We know that it is, but in the paper, we also give an intuitive example uh, of a stopping time, uh, which shows that it's not strongly Markov, but maybe, maybe I stop here and I hope it, I gave you the flavor of this example, which combines uh, these three properties of a fake Brownian motion. Thank you very much. Well, let's make a vote. If I have five people who turn on their camera and who explicitly say that they want to see the, the, the stopping time, I do it. Otherwise, it's maybe not such a good idea. We do. Yeah, how many? One, two? That's yeah. not enough. One hundred. Huh? No, I need, I want to see them, some faces and, uh, and who somehow give me a sign that they really want to see it. Otherwise, okay, so there seems to be, uh, okay, so 
Then let's, let's try to make an example. Okay, so this is a technique of coupling which borrows a lot from uh, uh, from David Hobson, who did a lot with this. Yeah, he's one of the players in this uh, thing. Like many very good mathematicians who contributed here. Uh, so a coupling argument. So I have my process xt here and say xt and xt tilde are independent copies of this process which I just constructed. So they are both defined on the same omega and, and are independent. Okay, and now what I do, I take the first time the uh, T is now a stopping time. It's the first time when x t is equal to x tilde t. Okay, so we have these two processes. Uh, each one is either in the busy or in the or in the lazy mode, and the particles. Well, they are continuous processes, and of course they, with positive probability, they meet. In fact, with probability one day. But in particular, that we have the following, that, uh, <coughs> that xt, the probability uh, that uh, that, well, xt, uh, is, uh, write it like this, is lazy and x, uh, no, like, um, uh, how do I do it? Uh, now, let's make it like this. The probability, I don't have even to write it, the probability that at time xt, the probability that uh, ether xt or x tilde t is in lazy mood, mood or mode as you like it, and lazy mood is strictly positive. So this is easy to show and it's intuitive. So one is moving and the other one is sitting on, uh, on its place, okay? <clears throat> so, and therefore, now look at the process at time xt. <clears throat> okay, then at the at, uh, conditional, uh, so the law of xt, uh, or Make it like this, the law of xt for t after t, given xt, <coughs> okay, I claim this is independent of law of xt, t after t, given the whole history up to time t. What's the intuitive explanation? If you just see that uh, the process xt at uh, the time t is in the territory of the, uh, of the, of the sitting guy, uh, then, uh, uh, then you don't know whether it came from a trajectory 
which was busy or whether it came from a trajectory which was uh, uh, which was uh, uh, well how do you how do you say it well at time t you you cannot uh, distinguish by just looking at the process which is at this point xt whether it came from a lazy particle or from a busy particle okay and therefore xt does not give you the full information ft because in ft when you look at the past then you know where it came from and then you know how the future law is of the process so i hope i gave a hint on how you can find uh, such a stopping time but I repeat myself uh, if uh, this is not even necessary uh, but because we know it any anyhow from the general Lauther theorem that such a time t must exist. Thank you. I have a question. Um, the, <laughs> the process that you construct in such and such an to that would depend on the uh, on the GFT, the state of GFT, the GFT, the GFT, the GFT, the GFT condition. Uh, Excuse me, I did not, uh, uh, maybe I missed the... The, the... the example that you constructed, the yeah. X infinity, yeah? is that, is that deviation to half? How dependent is it on the on the sequence uh, the n the n of GFT? Mm. Uh, Otherwise, if you if you start with a different sequence, would you get the same law or would you get a different? No, sequence? no, no. It depends on the sequence. Yes. Uh, exactly. Yes, yes. It, it depends on the yeah. So in fact, you construct the whole family of, of these processes. Yes, but they all do the same. Yeah. Of, of this final interval Gn. So to make this uh, <coughs> later part being martingale, you have to, of course, calculate the right jump probabilities to the boundary. Yes. Uh, this gives me an intuition. To, to jump, you need, of course, uh, exponentially distributed time, right? Yes. Uh, and is this exponentially distributed time dependent on the on 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 the on the on the place where you're sitting? Yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, the the intensity is dependent, of course. But you, for every point, you can take the same. Uh, I, I would say take a Poisson process or the first jump of a Poisson process, which is but, but essentially. The intensity changes, right? And yeah, the intensity. On, on how you sit. How close you are to the, to the other intervals? Yes. Uh, okay. No, no, no. It does not depend on how close you are to the other intervals. Let me, let me draw once again a picture. Okay. So we had this, this picture here. This was the n zero at time. Uh, yeah, at uh, n zero one. And say you have n uh, zero one plus delta t. This was the idea. Okay, so you have here. Then this is the next one. Okay, now you take here some point. This was a point x you're referring to. And here is the left, and here is the right, uh, the right, and here is the left neighbor. Okay. Uh, now, how how inten What's the intensity that this uh, particle who is sitting here that it jumps to the uh, left or to the right? Well, the the intensity must be exactly how the density of the Brownian uh, uh, of the Gaussian distribution how it goes down. So there, it's easy to write formulas, and as I mentioned before, as everything is on zero one, uh, this is going down all the time. Okay, 
the, the uh, density of the Gaussian. And you jump away exactly at the rate by how quickly this goes down. And now, once it jumps, then it does not matter whether they are further away or closer. It is just, it just uh, the relative distance which decides uh, where to jump. Does this answer the question? Yes, I understand that this, this mass that disappears must go away and then you, you distribute it in a way to keep mass in neutral. Exactly, exactly. So it must go away. The intensity changes. Yeah, the intensity, there are formulas for this intensity. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then, who else? Your story, Yuri. Uh, actually, uh, this is uh, rather. Uh, Okay. This is uh, uh, your story how uh, mathematical discoveries sometimes uh, uh, this is one of the examples of uh, mathematical adventures and uh, mathematical discoveries. Yeah, but I think the most important thing is this beautiful example and and I think it was very important to see the importance of it, yeah. And to crystallize these notions of, uh, of strong Markov and Markov. But thanks for the story. Okay. Thank you. Thank if there are no more questions, thank you very much. Ah, okay. Please make sure. Yeah, please make sure to send me the link to the recording, and and for this uh, for this talk of Dima, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.